used. Sound here, make sure we're working. Okay, the word is differential equation. It's just a word that describes an equation that contains a dy dx. That's it. Or it could contain a dz dt. It could contain a dw dt. Whatever. Okay, so the word differential equation is nothing special. We've actually been using differential equations for a long time now. The equation that contains a symbol like this. Or they could have written an equation that contained a symbol like this. That's what they mean by differential equation. Question. Make sure your phone is put away. Okay, next thing. It says find a solution to the differential equation. They say the solution is either going to be y or the solution is going to be f of x. It's essentially saying the same thing, it's just two different ways to say it. Okay? So that's a new phrase you haven't read before. Find a solution to a differential equation. The big idea is simple. If you have an equation that describes the rate at which some amount is changing, this, this equation here is what they're calling a differential equation. So you have an equation that describes how some amount is changing. When they say find the solution to that differential equation, it's equivalent to saying, please go find the equation that would be used to calculate the amount. And you could call that equation y equal, or you could call that equation f of x equals. But it's the same idea. So the big idea today is not very new. It's saying, okay, I have a differential equation, which means I have an equation which describes the rate at which some amount is changing, if I can find a solution to that differential equation, I will have found the equation that describes how the amount itself varies. Not how the rate of the amount varies, but how the amount itself varies. Question. Cool. So that's the goal of this problem. So let's learn how to do it. The other thing that's new today is this equation for dy dx contains both an input variable and an output variable. Uh, that's new. We've solved, we've done things before where we started with an equation for rate and we had to find the equation for the amount, but we've never done it when the rate equation, the differential equation, contains both the output, sorry, the input variable and the output variable. That's new. Okay, so this little box here for your notes. When you are given a rate, either as a formula, which is what we have here, our rate is definitely a formula, but sometimes they give it in a graph or a table. If they're asking you to find an amount, your first choice should be to use the fundamental theorem. The big exception is what we're learning about today. When that rate, that formula for the rate, includes the output variable, like you see here, then you have to use this other method. Uh, the acronym I gave for the other method is the SASI method. Or if you prefer to say SACI, it's up to you. To me, it looks like SASI. It also sounds more clever, so. Questions? Okay, so here we go. So can I erase this part? Let me just go like this. Cool. Okay. Okay. So to solve the differential equation, I have an equation that describes the rate at which some amount is changing. 
My equation for the rate does include an output variable y. So I have to use the SASE method. The S stands for separate. You are separating the x and the y, the output variable and the input variable. Oh, please. Edward. How do you know which one's the input and the output? Like, wouldn't y be the input variable in this situation? Take it for that. For everything that we'll encounter, whenever you see a derivative, it's always change in output divided by change in input. So they're telling you right away uh, that the y is the output. Because it's the slope, which is the rise over the run. And on a graph, the rise is considered the output. Okay. Does that answer your question? I think so. Okay. There we go. Cool. Yeah, you know, so, you've got to separate input and output variables. Tradition, it's not required, but tradition is we put the output on the left, input on the right. So first thing is to multiply both sides by dx, which gives you this. Question? Then I'm going to multiply both sides by e to the 2y, so I'll multiply both sides by this. And I'll end up with problems that involve solving a differential equation have shown up on the multiple choice. They're much more common to usually have one of them on the FRQ section. And they give quite a few points. For example, if you can get to this point in the problem, you actually get a point. Even if you can't remember anything else, that's worth the point. Which is pretty close to solving any multiple choice problem, because the multiple choice problems are all worth one and one quarter points. So that's how much a multiple choice correct response is worth. Doing just that much is worth almost the same as a multiple choice. The goal of the AP test, and I'll remind you of this a lot during the next two months, is not to get them all done. It's not even close to that. It's to get enough points to get a good score. Um, a good score is about 60 out of 108. No joke. <laughs> Roughly 55% will earn you a four, typically. <laughs> So 55% is typically a four. Uh, every university I've ever looked at, and I can help you look up whatever university you are interested in. It's not hard. Uh, they give a they give full college credit for a four. They don't give extra credit for a five on the AB test typically. So. so anyway, the goal is not to get all the points. The goal is to get enough and to get them as quickly as you can, not to get stuck trying to get hard points when you can still get easy points. So anyway, easy point. Question. Cool. Next step. The A stands for anti-differentiate. So I take this equation and I apply the anti-derivative operator to both halves. This says dy. This is e to the basically ax plus b. So I use the extended rule. This becomes the antiderivative would be 1 over a e to the ax plus b. Question? Okay. 
Okay, go back to the original goal. Look, go back to the original goal. The original goal is to find some equation for the amount. That equation is going to end up being y equals something or f of x equals something. If we started with some amount equation, and we found the rate equation, because we are taking a derivative to get from the amount equation to the rate equation, our amount equation, whatever it was, could have had a plus 7 on the end. And when we took the derivative of our amount equation, the derivative of the 7 would have been 0. So our rate equation would have been whatever plus 0. We wouldn't have known that we actually had a 7 in the amount equation. It's not, you can't tell it was there. Question. Therefore, we've got to account for that possibility. So we put a plus C right here. We don't worry about putting a plus C on both sides because we're ultimately trying to find an equation for Y equal. We're just going to group the constant on this side anyway. So, please. Um, they gave us the initial amount. Can we not figure out C based on the initial amount? Take it for that one. So we simply write plus C because we know there can be some sort of constant. And now we do exactly what Jonathan is describing. That's something really close. There. Um, we go find C. Uh, that's the uh, next step. The C stands for uh, another made up word. Constantate. Go find the, had to rhyme with separate and anti-differentiate. So. Poetic license and all. <laughs> so we go find the constant. Um, we have an equation here, look. You have a, a condition that says you're looking for the formula for f. The formula for f is right here. It simply is not rearranged into a convenient format. This is the equation for finding the amount. This is the equation for finding the rate. So this is how we would find the amount of whatever we're describing. This is how we describe the rate of how that amount changes. So, it says up there that when the x value is 0, the y value is supposed to be 1 half for our amount equation. So we just use that question. So literally just plug it in. These would have divided out anyway. Question. One thing you'll notice, if you look at the scoring guides in the back of the homework, uh, they show how the AP test writers suggest the problem be solved. They actually go do this step first. They rearrange the equation and then they solve for the constant. It doesn't matter which one you do first. I find it easier, better to do it this way. Uh, if you want to do it the other way, that's fine. Just be aware that when you look at the answers, the value they show for C may not look like the same value, but once we rearrange, you'll find that they are exactly the same result. So it doesn't matter which way you go. Question. Okay, so we keep going. 2 times 1 half would be 1. E to the 1 would just be E. So I have 1 half E. It's my value for C. Question. Oh. That's not like a. Oh, I don't mind. That makes sense. Good point. Cool. <laughs> and he's like, I can be confused. <laughs> Next one. No, we're not done, sir. Just needed to get some space. 
Like, that's a very unsatisfactory <laughs> Okay, let's quit now. Um, we've got, we've got one thing to be aware of, though, is that in this particular problem, they gave one point for separating. They gave two more points for finding each of the antiderivatives. They gave one full point the one Andrew wanted, two points for Andrew. They gave one full point for simply remembering that you needed to plug into the equation the appropriate value for y and the appropriate value for x. And they gave one more point for identifying the correct value of c. So at this moment in the problem, you've now collected five points out of the 60 you're trying to get to to get a four. And it's worth about the same, it's actually worth, it's worth exactly the same as four multiple choice problems. So anyway, I'm trying to convince you that you want to learn how to do this process because you can collect a lot of points quickly. Okay, next thing. We still need to find the equation for the amount. We have that equation, but to get the final point, we must write the equation as y equals or f of x equals. So, we take the equation for the amount, which is right here. This is our equation for the amount. So we're going to have one half, e to the 2y is equal to x cubed plus e divided by 2, or 1 half e, whichever you prefer. So question? Awesome. Uh, the goal now is not calculus, the goal now is algebra. Get the y all by itself, that's the step, isolate. So I multiply both sides by 2. Two would have to distribute, like so, or you wouldn't have to, but it just seemed easy because it divided so nicely. Now, you have to remember back to a previous class, we take the natural log of both sides of the equation. Remember this formula that I've shown you before this year, earlier this year? So we'll need to make sure that's memorized. Questions? Well, please. No. Are you able to distribute the ln between the two parts? Or does it have to I'll give you a ticket for that. Uh, ln is a function. It's not like an algebraic property. So it's, it's very different than having, say, an x right here or a 2 or whatever. So ln being a function, it has to, we can only manipulate ln functions per ln rules. So no, I can't distribute this. Okay. Good question. Plus, I don't really need to, because my goal is to get the y alone. And being an FRQ, I'm not required to do any sort of algebraic simplification. So I can leave it as messy as I want. So all I do now is say the natural log of e to the 2y is just 2y. I don't have to do anything with this, so I just write it down here. Last step, by both sides by 2, I'm done. Okay, now I have... If we used our kind of common example of a tank of water, this would be the equation that you know x would represent time. I could plug in any time, and this equation would tell me the amount in the tank at that time. Whereas the equation I started with 
would have told me how fast the water level was either rising or falling at any time. Question. There's another rogue cell phone user. Questions? Please. You only do this when you have two variables, like the input and the output. You can use the other method for like every other instance. If your formula for the rate does not contain the output variable, the SASE method actually does work. It just goes way faster. Like the math is, is much less complicated. Uh, but you can also just use the fundamental theorem like we've done before, because we've actually done that. So. If they don't give you like the f of zero equals one half, then can you just put like plus c instead of plus whatever it is equal to? If you're solving, if they ask you to find the solution to a differential equation, and they will do that using a lot of different wording, but if they're ultimately saying find the solution to a differential equation, I've never seen them, well, that's not true. Yeah, they, they, yeah, you could just stop it. See, it's not very common. Like I suddenly remembered a problem where they did have the final answers plus C, plus C, plus C. Which is not real common. So. Point. When they use, yeah, whatever. When they use the word solution, will it always mean find an equation like Y equals this? If they say find this, this you've got to be careful. It's a combination of words. Solution to the differential equation, we are looking for the Y equal. Yep. That's why I put this little note here for you. They'll sometimes call it the particular solution. It doesn't have to involve y and x. This one involves y and t, right? Because it involves b and t, actually. So your final equation for this thing is going to be b equals something. So that the actual variables they use don't matter at all. It's really as simple as you looking and saying, hey, they are giving me a qu an equation for computing how fast some quantity is changing. And if that equation involves an output variable, I have to use the SASE method. One of the warning, look at me, everybody, don't miss the warning. Do not let them trick you into thinking that just because they give you a differential equation, you are going to have to find the solution. It's like three years ago on the AP test, they wrote a problem where they talked about a differential equation and they made it impossible to solve. But they never asked you to solve it. So you shouldn't make the assumption that, hey, just because I have a differential equation, I have to solve the equation. It's like I say all the time, read slow and careful, comprehend what you're reading, and just do what they ask. Like you had to use the equation for different things, so the complexity of it had no effect. It didn't really matter. So please, Edward. Uh, so this reminded me of it. Is it cap sensitive? Like if you do a lowercase b instead of a uppercase b, are you going to lose the point for that? Over here? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, they. it is case sensitive. You've got to make sure that your uppercase or lowercase is appropriate because they will start using both. So. That's terrible. Okay. No, no. It's called, you know, minor detail. <laughs> and no need to stress over that. So. If you need something to stress about, come talk to me, I'll find some things for you. Question. Cool. Let's do something else here. Yeah? Moving on. Okay, on a related topic, so I'm changing the channel on you quite abruptly, but on a related topic, as I read this problem slow and careful, it says, I have some function called H. They do not tell me whether H is an amount or a rate. So I just keep reading. They give me one point on H. So I know that if I had a table, well, it's H is a function of X, so let's fix that. So I had a table here. I would know this. Actually, we'll pay points to the whole room. Uh, please raise your hand if you know which column, which numbers go in. Hands up. Like, I want to translate this to this. Show me head. What do I write in the table? Alexi? 
I mean, as if you knew, points three select. Plus two. Four. Just keep reading. Oh, now I get it. They are giving me an equation for the rate. They call it H prime. Technically, it could be the rate of the rate. Um, so I'm going to assume the amount is H. But notice, they do not ask me to find H. They want me to write an equation of a line tangent to H. Okay, so I'm not finding H at all. I'm finding a line tangent to H. So I'm doing this. Picture. I don't know exactly what H looks like, but perhaps it is something like this. This would be H right here. They want the line tangent to H at the point X equal four. Therefore, this point is four for the X. Uh, they didn't specifically state the Y yet. You're gonna vote. It's kind of different. This means true. This means False. The question is, uh, I messed this up. This is an H. Sorry about that. Yes, if the H, they gave you negative three, if that's actually H. So, how many saw that error? Come here. Come on. Okay, so it messed up my whole plan. So, if you're doing this, look at your hand and give yourself this many points. So. <laughs> um, yeah, that was the error I wanted to try and avoid, and then I went and did it. Um, this is a. This is a line tangent to H, which doesn't have an official name, okay? But I have this little note card for you to memorize. This is not new, we've done this earlier this year. Just emphasizing, we have an equation for H which we do not know in this case. We've been asked to find an equation of a line tangent which they call Y equals something. And we have an equation H prime which they do give us. This little note card is meant to help you sort all that out. Once you have an equation for y, that equation for y will allow you to find any of the points on the tangent line. Because it's not really a line anyway, it's just a bunch of points. The equation for h would allow you to find any of the points on h. The equation for h prime allows me to find any slope on h. You need me to talk through it. Please throw it. So for that one line you said we don't have the y coordinate on the dot, wouldn't it just be negative three? Because at the top they gave you the like h of four equals negative three. Please raise your hand if you knew that before you said it. Hands up. Two points. Take it for Carl. Um, no, it's perfect. Exactly why they wrote the problem the way they did. Like they give information here. And it's not like a hard question, but they are testing to see if you understand that this is H right here, this set of points. And so even though here they don't mention negative three, they didn't have to, they already had. That's perfect. Question? Sorry about that. Here we go. Okay, the goal is to find this equation. So again, don't, I don't know, just don't get on autopilot. Don't just start doing something because you did it before. Read slow and careful. In this problem, they gave us an equation for the rate. But they asked us to actually find the equation for the amount. Since our rate equation had an output variable, we had to use the SASE method. Okay? 
number two, they give us an equation for a rate, but all they want is an equation of a line tangent to the amount. So that's what I'm going to do next. Question. Okay, so this equation, which you've used before, I need a point and I need a slope. It's called the point slope form of the line. I have the point. Don't overthink it. Raise your hand if you can tell me how do I find M? Hands up. How do I find M? Let's go, Brindley. Um, you're going to point, I mean, plug in the 4 for the h prime of x, because that will give you the slope. So right here it says, our formula for h prime, here it says f, but whatever, h prime finds all the slopes on the curve. I need the slope of this curve right here. So I'm going to go find, using this equation, the value of h prime at an x value of 4. knew that hands up points this will be a question okay I spent quite a bit of time trying to explain all the details of this problem uh, my hope would be that you could really get this done in about 42 seconds because if you recognize what all the symbols represent it's the math is very very easy and it's a good example of what often happens on the AP test. The computations aren't difficult many, many times. Uh, let's see, 60 minus 2 is 14. 14 over 4, I don't have to reduce. You can if you want, but you don't have to. So now I just write the equation. Sweet. Next thing. So this is asking you to solve a differential equation. So we'll leave that for homework. We might come back to it. Number four. A uh, slightly new idea. They give a whole bunch of information. Uh, sometimes I actually skip that. And I'll just start reading what they're asking for. And then I'll go use the information as needed. It says, write an equation of a line tangent to the graph of f. So immediately in my brain, I'm thinking of this picture again. Equation of a line tangent to the graph of f. Uh, therefore, I would think of this as being f. And I'm trying to find an equation of the line at the point where x equals 1. Pause. I don't go further. Because my goal is to get 60 points, not do everything. So if I've read something I can do, I want to do it and not cloud my brain with other things. So I stop reading, say I need to do that. So now I've got to go back to the information and see how it helps. Let's see. F is a function that is differentiable. The table above gives values of F, F prime. I can see that. That's it. Uh, second derivative has this property. We even carried that clue earlier in the year. Because I'm going to have to remember, whenever I see this clue, I immediately know that they're trying to tell me something else. Because I'm going to have to remember what 
the other thing they're trying to tell me. And there we go. For Emmy. Yeah, that is the most, that's by far the most common thing they're trying to indicate when they give that clue. How many knew it? Two points, three for Emmy. So I don't really need, well, I have the wrong picture, then I guess I could fix that. I mean, you don't have to. Because that's a, you know, I'm showing an F that's concave down, so I'll grab the other one here. F is concave up. I'm trying to find an equation of a line tangent. So let's see. Once again, here's my app. Terrified over there. Um, the point is x equal 1. To write the equation, I'm going to have to know this value. Uh, raise your hand if you know this value here. Hands up. Hands up. Hold those in the box. Wait for a few more. There we go. Bottom. Right here it says when x is 1, the y value of f is negative 4. Let me stop. Point three three. Bottom. There we go. Cool. Okay, so let's see. Oh, I need the slope of f right here. Ends up, who knows the slope of f at that point? What is the slope of f at that point? Well, on it. it says right here, when x equals 1, the slope of f at that x value is 5. How many knew it? <coughs> Points 3 for a lot of them. So now I just write the equation. y equals 5. Parenthesis, x subtract 1 plus negative 4. Question? Please. Should you write f of x instead of y? Oh, I'll pay a ticket for that. You really shouldn't. Who can tell me why? Lower. Yeah, f of x is a separate idea. f of x is some curve of points. So the tangent line isn't F, so I wouldn't want to confuse it. Does that make sense? Yeah. The ticket for Logan. Um, you can call it G of X if you'd like. H of X, you know, some other name. Uh, and I sometimes prefer to do that because Y seems so generic. The G of X seems a bit more specific for the, the line. Here. So along those same lines of thinking, if it said like x, y, and y prime, would you have to change it to like f of x, for example? For like the line tangent? Yeah. Yeah, because otherwise it's going to be confusing as to you know which is the curve, which is the line, for sure. Okay, so next thing. It says use this line. So use this. To approximate f of 1.2. So look at my picture. I'm going to draw something. If it doesn't make sense, please ask me to do it differently. Okay, f is the curve. Right here is x equal 1. So not knowing the exact scale, I'm just going to exaggerate a little bit. So this is x equal 1. We're going to say that right here, That's one thing. X equal one point two. So the Y value would be this value like that. So this represents whatever that Y value is, that Y value is F of one point two. So we need me to go through that explanation again, just wave like this. 
Okay. We're supposed to use this equation to approximate this value. So the next thing you should write is approximate. So f of 1.2 is approximately this value right here. These two y coordinates, depending on the scale, are at least, you know, similar to each other. So we're going to go find the brown y coordinate and say that's a reasonable approximation for the blue y coordinate. Wave if you need me to talk about that idea. So heads up, how do I find the brown y coordinate? Up more. You're not sure, there's a huge hint right here. So, finding the brown, white coordinate. Let's go miles. Uh, would you plug in uh, 1.2 here into the x or y? So this is the equation, which just like this note says, can find every single point on this line. So all I have to do to find that point is use this x coordinate. I do not have to do any simplification because it's an FRQ, so I don't. Replace the x with 1.2 and stop. I've done is use this line to approximate the value of f one. It did that. I don't keep reading. So, question: How many knew it? Point three for mine. Question. Cool. Keep going. That part's done. Is this approximation greater or less than the actual value of f of one point two? Please look at my picture. Raise your hand and tell me. Is the approximation greater or less than the actual value? Hands up. Look at the picture. The approximation, approximation greater or less than the actual value? Can we? The approximation is obviously below the actual value. How many saw it? Two points. Three for Cambria. So you write that down. Just use their words, then you don't have to struggle with how to write it. It says, is the approximation greater than less? You just write the approximation. Is less than a good abbreviation for the actual value is f of 1.2. Okay, just answering the question. Is the approximation less, greater or less than the actual value? Approximation is less than f of 1.2, it says give a reason, because here's the reason. We created a tangent line at x equal 1. We created a tangent line at x equal 1. We're trying to see what's happening at x equal 1.2. From x equal 1 to x equal 1.2, That's the only points we're really concerned with. And for that span of points, F is concave up. is actually concave up over a much bigger span, but the span we're concerned with is we've got to start at 1, go to x equal 2, as long as f is concave up on that interval, that's how I know my approximation is less. Um, since, since the greater knows that 1.2 is in between negative 1.5 and 1.5, could you just write because f of x is concave up and then leave f that? I think so, but it makes me a little nervous. Yeah, um, I'm pretty sure I've actually seen FRQs where that's all they wrote. 
But then I've seen others where they included this little extra detail, which does convey slightly bit more understanding. So I feel more comfortable because to me it's not that hard to say, yeah, I'm worried about that interval. You know, start at one, that's where the tangent line was created. Uh, stop at 1.2, that's where I'm finding the approximation. So I'm pretty sure I've seen FRQs where they didn't include it and you got the point. But I know I've seen some where they did include it, so I'm not sure how you know how particular they would be. Good question. Anybody else? Sweet. Keep going. Next thing. Hold on. Uh, you can do that one. Homer? Homer? Oh, just a hint for number seven. Okay, big hint. The question says show show that L is a tan is tangent to the graph. The way you should read the problem is find the equation of the line tangent. Two F at X equal three and verify that the equation of the line tangent. is y equals 18 minus 3x. Okay, whenever they say show on the AP test, what they really mean is find. But they're giving you a bonus. They're saying, oh, go find the equation of the line tangent. And uh, by the way, uh, we'll give you the answer before you begin. It's a, writ it's a written question. They can't, you won't earn any points unless you show your work properly. So they don't have any problem telling you, hey, you're trying to find this equation. Please demonstrate that you know how to find it. That's what they mean when they say show. Question. So whenever you read an FRQ that says show, you know you just got a bonus. Because they're giving you the answer. You just have to show how to find it. So. Cool, next thing. New idea. This graph says consider the differential equation. So again, just because you are considering a differential equation doesn't mean you're going to find the solution, doesn't mean you have to use the SASE method, whatever. They're just giving you a differential equation. The instructions say on the axis provided sketch a slope field for the given differential equation at the 12 points indicated. A okay, slope field is a picture of what the graph of the amount would look like. Memorize that. A slope field is a picture of what the graph of the amount would look like at different points. Let me demonstrate. I'm going to take that dy dx. And I'm going to plug into that dy dx. Let's see. If I use some symmetry, it works better. So I notice right here, if I choose y to equal 1, this will equal 0. The value of x will be irrelevant. So I'm going to choose y to equal 1. Let's back up my little notation here. This is just going to be at y equal 1. Whenever y equals 1, the value of the slope is 0. So like this, you need to show it again. That means at every point on the slope field where y has a value of 1, 
If the graph of the amount were to go through those points, the graph of the amount would be horizontal at those points. So it feels a picture of what the amount equation would look like if it were graphed at specific points. It does not mean the amount equation does this necessarily, although in this case that's true. Um, it's just saying if the amount equation went through those points, what would it look like as it went through those points? Okay. Question. This is the equation for finding the slope of the amount equation. So I know that if the amount equation has a y coordinate of 1, this formula tells me that amount equation will have a slope of 0 at any of these points. So I draw a slope of zero. A slope field is a picture of slopes. Then you just pick another one. Let's see, here's another easy. If x has a value of zero, it won't matter the value of y. So this is also true. Okay. Once again, it doesn't indicate that you have some sort of graph that does something crazy like this. Like somehow it goes through all of these points. It's not saying that. Like this is not, you know, okay? It's not saying that. It's saying if you had a graph of the amount, and the graph of the amount happened to go through this point, as the graph of the amount went through that point, it would have a horizontal slope. That's what it's saying. Question. Well, keep going. I'm going to find a few more here. So you just keep working your way through the chart. Let's see. Y dx at if x is negative one or x is positive one, it won't matter because we're squaring x. You can go find it for x equal positive 1, negative 1 will have the same result. Literally plug in the formula, x equal 1. And let's see, let's go to, I guess let's go to y equal 3. So that's going to equal 2. Questions? So I have to draw a slope that has a slope of 2. So the way I do it is I reference the other dots. I say, okay, over 1, up 1. A slope of 1 would look like this. So I can't do that, I'll lose a point. A slope of 2 would have to be like down 2 over 1, so it's got to be more like that. Just do my best to kind of line it up like that. So I would have to draw the blue, not the green. So, again, something like that won't do it. That won't do it. So like that. And I know that over here it's exactly the same thing. Like that. Question. Um, like so, you don't get this kind of wrong on the um, test. Like m equals 2 by the point, then you just you know what the slope is at that point? Um, I don't know. They've never given an example of that. They just always show pictures like this. Uh, you don't have to be super careful, just careful enough. Like, I've never seen them ask you to draw slopes other than 0, 1 half, 1, and 2. And so as long as you draw slopes that can be distinguished from those few values you're finding. I don't think there'd be anything wrong with writing a little, you know, m equal 2 thing, but I've just never seen it done, so I don't know. Anybody else? Uh, you just keep going. So now we've got to go here. So that would be dy dx. When x has a value of 
is still 1, but y is going to have a value of also 2. So no, also is wrong. Why did it have a value of 2? So that's going to be plug in 1 squared, plug in 2. And you don't have to show your work. You don't have to show the computations. You can just do the computations in your head. Okay, question? So slope of one is going to look like this. So answering Eric's question, as long as the grader can see that you understand those are different, you're fine. I just use the dots and kind of line it up. Nah. Uh, technically, because you're plugging in the x and the y, like this could have been at x equal 1 and y equal uh, whatever, so it is better to indicate both. These aren't needed. You don't have to write any of this. Yeah, I write all that because as I'm explaining, I think it helps you see better what I'm thinking. Already. But you can do that part of the time. Please, Carl. Just look at your head. Would you draw nothing if like the y on the bottom would be like, so example, like products over y. So for every y is zero, like on the problem nine, Hold on. would you just draw nothing? Because y, y is on the bottom. Oh, on gotcha. The so if like you notice, they don't put any dots here. Oh. Okay. Yeah, because. Because it's impossible. Well, technically, if I have a slope where the top is some number and the bottom is zero, that means the slope is vertical. But for whatever reason, when they ask me to do slope things, they never ask me to draw a vertical line. So they just leave that part off. <laughs>